crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and hear the lamentation of the women. G'day guys, Maker with the Outer Circle, and welcome to White Scars Week. Yes, we're continuing on with our Getting Started in the Horus Heresy series, and this week we're up to the Fifth Legion. Wow, five weeks already, that's crazy. Um, so, White Scars, what do you need to know? Well, first of all, your Legion special rules will play a part in what units you take. For example, main Legion rules you need to keep in mind are the fact that you get born in the saddle, which means you never have to make dangerous terrain tests thanks to having skilled rider, which is amazing for the bikes. Um, and you will use bikes in this army. Uh, another rule to keep in mind is the swift action. So, swift action is a rule which, where if you end your full movement away from where you started, so your infantry squad moves 6 inches, your bike squad moves 12 inches, that kind of thing. Um, in your movement or assault phase, you actually get to reroll all failed to wound rolls of a 1 for all attacks, and you gain a 6 plus cover save or improve your existing cover save by plus 1 up to a maximum of 3 plus. So, where is this handy? Well, destroyer squads, bike squads, tactical squads, any of that kind of thing, move them, you will get those bonuses. However, do keep in mind, if you're attacking vehicles, well, unfortunately, vehicles, you are not making a to wound roll, so you'll get no bonus against them. So keep that in mind when um, you're actually attacking them. It's only to wound. Another option, um, well, another rule to keep in mind is to laugh in death's face, and that is you must take at least one fast attack choice if you have a heavy support choice, except in Zone Mortalis. Thing is, though, that's not really ever going to affect you because they're white scars. You're always going to have fast attack options. Now, there's two bits of war gear available to the white scars that are unique. The first one I'll talk about is the Cyberhawk, which is basically a model that you put down the board can't be targeted can't be killed can't be shot it just exists and you move it around wherever you like now the thing that's crazy about it is when this is placed it's done at the start of each turn and any infantry in your army that have the legioners of studies white scars special rule get to reroll ones to hit when shooting at a target within six inches of this thing this is ridiculously good. Now, it may not sound great, but once you combine that with the fact that you have swift action, if your squad moves six inches and shoots a target within six inches of the Warhawk, reroll ones to hit, reroll ones to wound. That's a good combo. And it is something that can help out units like tanks. Um, it can help out units that have multi-melters, that kind of thing, to help you get that kill shot. There's nothing worse than rolling that one to hit on your three up multi-melter. So, those, that's something to really keep in mind. Last thing when it comes to White Scar's rules, the Power Glaive. This thing is just versatile. It is a power weapon. It's an AP3 power sword. However, if you want, you can make it two-handed. At that point, you lose the plus one attack bonus for your pistol. However, you gain AP2 at initiative. It counts as a power axe without unwieldy. That is phenomenal. So yes, you will take that. And keeping all this in mind, we now get into the units themselves. First of all, the White Scars character who comes in the Kill Team Cassius from Death Watch at Games Workshop itself. I think this model is worth buying. Get it on eBay for really cheap, or even the Chinaman if you're in Australia, because it's cheaper. Now, why this model? First of all, the sword. Perfect Chinese Dao sword. Very hard to get good Chinese weapons in 28mm uh, that actually suit Marines. I do have a small list of possible choices, but they're all mostly katanas. Uh, these do kind of have a sort of Dao profile to them, these Cromwell Legionary Combat Blades, but most of the options are sort of like katanas. I think if you took a katana, thinned it out on the back of the blade a little bit, 
and then round it off the profile, you'd get a very good Dow sword out of it. The other option is to go with the Legion Mark IV power weapons and use the sabers out of it. They look kind of like Tawars or Scimitars, you may be able to get away with them as Dows, even though they're not aesthetically perfect. But people are not going to dock your points for it. I'm just saying, if you want to be like really fluffy, that's how you can do it. So he's also got the Mongol head and the Mongol haircut. Now you can also quickly green stuff on your little Fu Manchu mustache onto different soldiers in your army. And you can use top knots off orcs, chaos warriors, that kind of thing on their heads in order to give them that classic white scars top knot. So he's got the war gear. He's got the cyber hawk. And again, you will take the cyber hawk. Now the thing is, he's got Death Watcher arm, which you don't want, and he's got the Mark 7 legs, and technically a Mark 7 torso, neither of which you want. And of course the Mark 7 backpack. Up to you what parts you do and don't use from him. I suggest the head, hand, the eagle, and his weapons, shield, that kind of thing. All perfectly acceptable. You want to put him on a jet bike. With that in mind, you want him to be in a full jet bike squadron so that's something to keep in mind your command squad will be on jet bikes your commander your praetor will be on a jet bike you will be using dows because why wouldn't you ap3 for killing power armor ap2 when you need it perfect weapon and cheap if you've already got a power weapon you just swap it out for the dow Next up, we have the good old-fashioned Betrayal at Kelth box with White Scars upgrades. Do you need the White Scars upgrades? Uh, not really. There's no uh, White Scars decals released yet, but there are the shoulder pads, helmets, and torsos. I definitely suggest getting at least the helmets and the torsos because they can be used on your jet bike riders to really give them some legion flavor and they look great on veterans, that kind of thing, if you choose to take some. So, again, something to keep in mind. You don't have to put the top knots on on the helmets and you could put the top knots on to standard marines' heads in order to give them the white scars look. For the squads themselves, these are your basic tactical squads. However, I do suggest maybe investing in a couple of the power weapon sets and kitting out your squads with Dows on the sergeants, not the power fist. Yeah, look, they may get into fights with vehicles that they won't win, such as Contempt of Dreadnoughts, but is it worth it taking the power fist over the versatility of the Dow? I think Artifsa armor and a Dow sword on a sergeant makes all of your tactical squad sergeants viable in close combat they will deal with everything um, to what extent debatable but they can deal with everything you can use your other infantry in the squad to absorb the wounds while that guy dishes out the damage for the elites i want to see destroyers yeah why not i think uh Sagya marzin that's the white scars shamed death squads these are a great representation for that, and really it's just a fluffy aesthetic to the army, and it does something other than just um, going for jet bikes constantly. I would probably take them with jump packs. They are a very expensive choice, however, for a full squad of 10 with two rad missile launchers and jump packs. Um, I would like to see them with the white scars, torsos, and helmets, though, because it would look fantastic on the destroyer squads. And if I was considering starting a White Scars army, this is the approach I personally would take. Especially having played a lot of Raven Guard, I love Destroyers. And again, something you don't see a lot of unique, it's keeping up the fast pace of this army. Now, with that statement, you're going, hang on, you said this is a fast paced army, Macca, and yet you're showing us White Scars tactical marines. Well, let's mount them in Storm Eagles. One or two is fast attack choices. I'd say at least one, and you could put maybe a 15-man tactical squad in it and have the other 15-man tactical squad out of your Kelt set on foot, holding the objectives in your back line while this Storm Eagle drops the rest of your guys off up front. Fantastic. 
Also, the Storm Eagle is one of the best firepower options you have in a Legion army. You have twin las cannons, the multi melter at the front, and then you use Power of Machine Spirit to fire your two, basically whirlwind templates, into another unit. Fantastic firepower. Focus down vehicles with one set of guns, power of the machine spirit to fuck up another vehicle or another squad off to the side. It's brilliant. I love it and I do it all the time. Um, I had two in my White Scars arm, uh, sorry, my Raven Guard army at 3,000 points. Optional upgrades for it you can get White Scars doors. Not everyone will want them, um, but because there's no decals yet, they are sort of an option for people. If you want to actually make it a bit more white scarsy in some way, white scarsy I don't think is a real term, but we're making it a term here today. That's one of the ways that you could do it. You could just carefully cut the emblem off the front even and stick that onto your vehicle. You've got lots and lots of options. Now of course no white scars army would be complete without scimitar jet bikes. Now, I think these are definitely something you want at least one squad of in your fast attack, and you want one squad with multi-melters in your heavy support. Why anti-tank? Plain and simple. They are a dedicated anti-tank platform that you can use. And they're fast, they will not suffer from dangerous terrain like other people's bikes will, thanks to your skilled riders special rule. So it gives you all the benefits of your speed. Plus, in conjunction with your Cyber Eagle, someone could fly the Cyber Eagle up next to enemy vehicles. You basically know that five out of six shots are guaranteed to hit that target. And then, of course, you're going to roll five ones because you're that lucky. Also, don't forget, your Command Squad, you want them on these. Now, Command Squad can be as few as two models. So, a three-man jet bike squad could, in theory, fulfill your HQ on one bike and your command squad on two others. But I would personally invest in the full two sets of jet bikes to give you six jet bikes for your command squad. One for the commander and then a full five man command squad. Why? They're all armed with DAOs. They've all got two plus armor saves. Nasty stuff. Next up, if you don't decide to go with two Storm Eagles in your fast attack, perhaps go for the Legion Javelin Attack Speeder with Laz Cannons. It's just giving you a bit of anti-armor firepower. You could pick missile launchers if you like, but again, it's something that can keep up with the jet bikes and it goes with this theme of a constantly moving army. There's no tanks in this army. The very last unit, or units, I want to look at Fire Raptor gunships. I think that one in heavy support, maybe two. Why? Well, again, we're staying away from tanks. We're going for a fluffy theme here. We have destroyers with jump packs. We have Legionnaires Astartes and Storm Eagles. Maybe even the Terminators, who could be Keshig Terminators for all I care, out of the Betrayalic Health Box, could be in this army. But they're all going to be flying in transports of some kind. This gives you your firepower and you want it armed with the Reaper auto cannons, not the quad heavy bolters, they're not worth it. So the Reaper auto cannons, they can fire independently, you can also take the missiles on the wings and of course you've got the nasty nasty bolter up front. So there you go, white scars, nice and simple. Infantry, bikes, flyers. Uh, and I suppose some jump infantry. But yeah, keep it to that simple formula. Remember, as always, these armies are the core basis of what I think constitutes a fluffy faction force. You can go on from here and make a completely different White Scars army. You might do Dreadnoughts and Terminators and Drop Pods or something like that, or a really tank heavy force with Sikoran tanks because they're fast vehicles. That's all good and well. I want to try and give you two to two, two and a half thousand points um, of just a solid army that you can just build in any direction you like, but the core elements are there and they're all things that will work well together and they'll give you a competitive list, not a high tier competitive list, but a, a very solid list. 
That's all it is. It's not how you have to do it by any means. It's just my suggestion to you as someone who's been playing Heresy since fucking day one. So anyway, I'm Mac with the Outer Circle. Hope you all enjoyed the White Scars episode. It's not as good or in-depth, I guess, as other episodes, but that's just because the White Scars don't have everything yet. They've got Legion rules, but they don't have any of their specialist units, and they definitely don't have their Primarch. And when that happens, we'll probably have to revisit them. Anyway, thank you all for watching the episode, and I'll see you all next time.